Or would you just be? No, I don't, I don't have a presentation. Okay, I, thank I, you. I, yeah, I'll, I'll just um, be answering your questions. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this evening meeting of London Borough of Newham Overview and Scrutiny Committee. Can anyone present hear me? Yes. Yes. Thank you. This evening meeting will be held virtually via Zoom. The council has decided that while we are in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, public meetings will be held virtually for the meantime to keep councillors, officers, and members of the public as safe as possible. Members of the public will be able to view this meeting via Newham YouTube page. For this meeting, we will be aided by Roger Raymond and Richard Plummer. May I ask members to note that they must raise their hands in order to indicate that they wish to speak. I also want to remind members that if vote is taken at any time, it will be by way of raising your hands like so, in order that we can capture this on screen. I also want to note that I've invited, sorry, this meeting is now called to order. <clears throat> welcome colleagues, welcome Councillor Charlie McLean and officers. <coughs> Is there any apologies for absence? Chair, I don't have any apologies. Okay. The clock would note that there's no apologies for absence. Item three, declaration of interest. Are there any members wishing to declare an interest? The clock would note in the records that there is no member wishing to declare an interest. Minutes of the meeting held on the 10th of November, 2020. I move as a correct record, the minutes of the last meeting of the London Borough of Newham Overview and Scrutiny Committee held on the 10th of November. Do I have a second, please? I'll second that, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Lee Parkway. Item five, question to the Deputy Mayor for, um, for committee, communities. I'm delighted to welcome Councillor Colleen McLean and Officer Mohammed, who will be supporting our during this half an hour session. I'm hoping to conclude this session by 7 p.m. this evening. Councillor McLean, over to you. Hi, good evening. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a slight, slight correction. So it's Councillor Charlene McLean, and I'm the statutory deputy mayor. I'm, I'm no longer in the other other role so I just wanted just to make that clarification um thank you for inviting me I know that I was supposed to come in March but um obviously due to COVID that was um cancelled so I'm 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 happy to to answer any any questions that um the the committee wished to put to me if that's okay yeah and I stand corrected I'm a deputy mayor thank you thank you chair um, Chair, yeah. sorry, yes. sorry, sorry to interrupt. Just to say that um, I'm also present, as well as Mohammed Hamadan, as um, Councillor McLean's uh, corporate director. So very happy to answer any questions as well. Thank you, Jessica, uh, for um, introducing yourself. Okay. We do have some key lines of inquiries. Also, I know that two members have indicated that they wish to ask you um, questions. So without any further ado, I would ask Councillor Ken Clark to go ahead with the questions to the member. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, 
I have two questions that I'd like to, to, to ask the lead member. Uh, is Firstly, um, I, I was very pleased to be at a briefing some Saturdays ago when it was confirmed that there were no plans uh, to close libraries. But I'd like to bore down uh, a bit deeper than that. Um, yeah, I, I'm fully aware, and probably members are, is uh, a year or so ago uh, in, in the budget, there was a line uh, that gave 1.4 million from memory uh, savings in, in that particular area. Uh, and, uh, uh, and also, I'd really like to know, because at the time, I remember reading that uh, there was probably about 14 jobs on the back of that 1.4 uh, uh, million pounds. Uh, and, and also, um, uh, the, the savings were going to be taken probably in year two and three. Uh, well, now that we're in year two and approaching three, uh, I'd just like to know a bit more detail uh, about what those cuts could probably lead to. I know we briefly spoke the other Saturday about possibilities of uh, opening times and closing times, but could I have some more detail about where those redundancies would fall within the service and, and also, uh, you know, I mean, uh, uh, when would they now be implemented? Thank you, Ken. Um, I, I will start off, I, I know, Chair, that you said that you wanted just one person to answer, but as we have two, only two questions in, in half an hour, I hope you'll indulge me in the way that I wish to do this. Um, so, yeah, you're right, Ken, that it was um, 1.4, roughly, was the, the amount that we would be saving, um, not cuts, but, but savings. So it was split into three. Um, and it consisted of, of, of several items. So the first year savings, we've overachieved on those. So we um, reprofiled the borough-wide programmes and also made some efficiencies with regards to the remodeling of the, of the cafe offer in, in the libraries and did the decommissioning of the Watts on app. Um, with regards to the, 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 the possible redundancies, that was with regards to the restructuring of the service. Um, so the, the, the first two years was to be looking at how we could move forward, especially with the systems assemblies and the way that resident, well, what was community neighbourhoods and is now resident engagement and participation, um, how that sits within the council and how the model could evolve from, you know, having a manager, um, senior officer within each neighbourhood, um, you know, maybe potentially we, we could have a citizen assembly engagement team and just to look at different options. So it's not guaranteed that will be 14 um, members of staff, but that was a, a, a rough estimate. Um, I, I don't know if either Jess or Mohammed wanted to add further detail to that. Um, and I'm happy to come back for more, with, to give more clarification if necessary, Ken. Can I just say, um, Chair, I, I would like to know the detail of those 14 jobs. If someone can tell me where they actually are, uh, and, and what sort of, are they managers or are they uh, people on the, on, on the floor of libraries? You know, where are those cuts actually going to come? Okay, so as I said, I, I don't like to refer to them no. as, 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 no, as cuts no. as, as such because language is really, really important. Um, you know, we at this particular moment in time, we don't know exactly which ones. If you look back at the papers um, from February, there, be, there was a clear timeline which showed that there would be a period of investigations and exploratory work, and that is currently where we are at the moment. So I can't give you um, deals, but, but it wouldn't be frontline staff, as you, as you know, Ken, because the majority of the, the money sits with the, the managers and the senior officers rather than frontline staff within the libraries. Mm -hmm. So, that, so the, the, the actual library service will not be affected by those savings. So, so can I just confirm then that there's going to be no loss of staff in libraries? Frontline staff, people that run the libraries? Yeah. No. Yes. I, I, no, I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't give a cast iron guarantee, but it's yeah. not envisaged that that will be the case. Yeah. Yeah. So that the yeah. libraries will still be open. Um, you know, we're not envisaging any closures of, of libraries, but yeah. obviously, you know, the, the current draft, the current budget proposals are draft proposals. So, you know, members may decide that they, they want to close some libraries. I, I'm not envisaging doing that. That's not something that I would want to do. Um, you know, the extended hours will, will still remain. Currently, they're not open yeah. extended because of COVID. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but I, I don't <clears throat> know. 
Yeah, can, can I say for, thank, thank you for that? But I, I do find it interesting that after a year or so of actually deciding how something was going to be done, uh, that we still haven't firmed up what will actually happen. If you, if you have and, also, and, also, and also, I'd still like to know more about the, the, you know, what the opening and closing hours will be uh, you know, as we approach the, the budget itself. OK, so before I ask officers to, to, to come in, because clearly yeah. I, I've not given you the answers that you want. If you yeah. hadn't noticed, Ken, we have been in a global pandemic at present. So, yeah. the, neighbor, so the neighbourhood staff who have been running the Help Newham service, um, you know, officers have been, their, their efforts have been diverted elsewhere. So yeah. unfortunately, we haven't been able to progress work as we would have liked because we're in a global pandemic. But now we're not we are actually, you know, starting that piece of work or continuing that piece of work from where we, we left off before um, COVID, COVID yeah. hit. So, so, so all, all right, I, I can accept some of that, although I always thought officers were working from home, but uh, maybe they haven't. But can I just ask again, um, surely you must know at this moment in time what, how you're going to sustain the current opening and closing hours and what they're going to be in future. Okay, so as I said previously, yeah. we are not envisaging cutting the hours of the, the, the current hours of libraries. So extended hours will continue. Libraries open at nine o'clock and are closed until, uh, and open until eight o'clock once COVID's over. Um, the smaller libraries, obviously, as you know, North Woolwich, Custom House and Plasto uh, don't have the, the, the same extended hours. Yeah. But, you know, I, I don't know how many other different ways I, I can say it to you. Yeah. Thank um, you, um, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, I, I've got I, another question, Chair, as you know. Uh, so Ken, um, because time is going, I will come back to you, but let me bring John in. I did, I did say at the beginning, I had two questions, Chair. Yes, um, can I ask you to be quick? Yeah, and, well, they're all, they're all quick. Can I? Be brief. The, answers okay, are longer, the answers are longer than the questions. Uh, okay, Ken. Yeah, my, my other question is, and I brought this up before, I'd like to have more detail about it. I'm getting more concerned about the sort of cultural centre of, of the borough with the uh, uh, Stratford Circus uh, now going into some, a youth hub or whatever. So uh, that, there's a loss there, I, I would have thought. But also I'm more concerned uh, about the Theatre Royal uh, because of that's like the sort of flagship uh, of our culture, really, that, that we've got left in Newham in terms of a, a, a well-known theatre. Uh, and I notice, and I've spoke about this before, about uh, it seems in the paperwork they're talking about at some stage, I'm not quite sure when that would be, there'd be the, the, the grant of a quarter of a million uh, will, will disappear. Uh, and obviously, uh, and what I'm also interested in is uh, uh, you seem to be saying that that would happen in the next administration. But also I'd like to know there seem to be some conditions about how the current quarter of a million is, is we're going to ask the Theatre Royal to comply with. Could you tell me more about what those conditions be? I, I take it I was right when the, the Court of Amendment is going to stay to the next administration, but I understand that there's some conditions that are going to be attached to that. I'd like to know what those conditions are. OK, thank you for that, Ken. Um, I, I don't like to look at it as, you know, we're putting it over to the next administration. They're putting it, the, the saving to the year 23-24. So, you know, that's quite... I can't quite put my finger on the, the, my description of the wording, but you know, it's 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 something that is you know people people do. So we've put the save into twenty three twenty four, and you're correct, it's two hundred and fifty six thousand pounds. Which you know, in the current climate, we are actually have hard choices to to make, um, and it's a historic amount that is granted to the Fit Royal. The Fit Royal is the only. Um, arts organisation within the borough that actually receives a grant the, the days of giving grants are you know long long gone really um so it's 23 24 which gives them two two years to you know to, to get themselves straight to, to try and find other um forms of of finance to, to plug that gap um i must say that the arts in general actually sits within community wealth building, which is the mayor's portfolio. Um, so I can't answer all of your questions on that. But obviously that money comes from from our budget currently. Mm -hmm. um, I must add that 
you know, you, you said that they're about conditions being attached to the money. Well, mm -hmm. there was always um, a, a expectation that there would be certain outcomes from them receiving that grant, which I'm sure you're probably aware of. And I know that there's been discussions between the theatre and the Youth Empowerment Service, because as you know, the Stratford Circus is, is, is going to be a, a flagship youth hub. And so that sits with the Youth Empowerment Service. But there has been um, discussions underway as to how they can, the theatre world can utilise that space um, and, you know, work with the Youth Empowerment Service to, to deliver services, et cetera, et cetera. But as I said, that doesn't actually come under myself as such so I can't really answer that question fully for you Kim but hope that helps okay thank you for that thank you can we ask can I ask that um you provide a written answer um to that yeah um, sure okay thank you um John Whitworth Councillor John Whitworth yeah thank you chair um yes Charlene I would like to ask you a, a, a question and um, if I may, I'd just um, like to give um, a one sentence extract from your portfolio description, which, which um, illustrates the council's um, commitment to engagement with residents, because my question is in that context. Um, and, and this is a part of your responsibility is to provide political leadership on resident engagement and to develop the civic dialogue and engagement approach in decision making and financial planning with mm -hmm. residents and supporting the mayor with integrating these approaches into the annual budget setting processes. And, and my question is around the, there is one session every year of the community, uh, uh, community neighborhood assemblies where the residents are given um, a presentation of the budget proposals and asked for their comments. Now this has been uh, in January where the residents can comment on what is going to happen but my question is can this session be brought forward in the year to a stage where options are being considered by the council and where the residents opinion could feed in to the actual proposals can this be considered in future years yeah, thank you very much for that question, Councillor Whitworth. You're absolutely right. That is something that we we identified that, you know, it, it would be better if residents were able to, you know, have more of a choice and to have an input. I mean, the first year that we did the um, consultation with residents, um, it was a bit late in the day and it was actually really important to be able to I don't want to, I want to say the word educate, but that sounds like I'm patronising residents, but for them to have, to gain an understanding about how, you know, council finances work, you know, what council taxes is, is, is made up of and where it goes, et cetera, et cetera. And residents did actually find that really, really useful to, to, to get an understanding about how the finances of the council works. But you're absolutely right, John, and that is something that we will take into consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Charlene. I'm pleased to hear that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, is there any other member? Um, I haven't seen any other member and therefore I would like to thank member for aiding my timekeeping in this matter. Um, uh, Deputy Mayor, thank you very much. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Mohammed, for attending and you can now have an early evening. Thank so, you. Thank you very much, members. And um, um, yeah, I hope if to you see can... You again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Happy to come back at any, at any time. And um, if you could just drop me a line about exactly what you want in that written answer, I'll get that done for you. Brilliant. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you yes. Okay. The committee will now move to item six on the agenda. Questions to the cabinet member for environment, highways and sustainable Transport. I'm delighted to welcome to this meeting Councillor James Asser, Cabinet Member for Environment, Highways, and Transport, Trans, Sustainable Transport. Councillor Nerufa Jahan, Deputy Cabinet Member for the same portfolio. And Jamie Blake, Corporate Director of Environment and Sustainable Transport. Is there any other member or officers who supported? Councillor Aster this evening. If there is, please introduce yourselves. I can see from Councillor Aster 
at the movement there isn't. Okay, and um, thank you. I will now ask Councillor Asse to make any opening remarks. Do you have any opening remarks, Councillor Asse? Thank you, Chair. If I may, I know you've got a number of questions and we've replied on a number of issues, but I would just like to touch on a number of areas of the portfolio, if I may, that perhaps haven't been picked up, just to, to, get, to give an overview, if that's okay with you, for a couple of minutes. Yes, you may. Okay, just a few things that I, I, I hope will be of interest and use to the committee on, on the wider portfolio, just on a number of areas, because obviously my brief does cover quite a, a range of topics, a number of which are obviously of interest to residents. So I just want to go through a few of those. So just um, on these in, in, in order, um, so just some areas we've been doing some progress on. Uh, recycling, which I know I get a lot of questions about. Um, successful recycling trials have now taken place this autumn across a number of wards to make us allow us to plan for the changes that we had committed to earlier in the year um, in 2021. One of those things we've been able to identify is that we will be able to continue with wheelie bins rather than return to bags um, and we will now be able to move out and move on with our plan for weekly recycling in 2021 which I know is a high demand amongst a number of residents and expand it so everybody's getting covered. Um, additionally following agreement with Elwa and Renewi who are Elwa's waste contractor we'll be able to expand the range of recycled items to include things like glass and a much wider range of plastic. Again, something I know we've been getting a lot of requests from, from residents. Uh, following on from that, I'd also like to mention on fly tipping. I know you've had, we've given you some, some information on this, but following our successful pilot schemes with Keep It and Tidy in early 2020, we've started to roll out those interventions across the borough, which are proving successful. We're using the data from fly tip reports to target hotspots, and we're starting to move these around in batches after six weeks to start targeting and, and disrupting those areas. There's further work that's going to need to be done on that in 2021, but we're also looking at, at what changes we can make to areas we know are target spots such as rationalising green banks, which tend to be uh, areas and identified areas for fly tipping to see if we can make changes in the streetscape that might help uh, reduce the kind of natural uh, tendency in some areas to uh, attract fly tipping. As part of that, we're also work has begun on rationalising and making improvements for our street cleaning services. Again, something we get a lot of interest from, from councillors and from residents. We've made significant savings by bringing the three companies under combined management. There'll be further work on ensuring better joint working across 2021. So we're learning across the board and we're, we're, not, we're, we're getting joint working across the whole borough. Um, Parks and green spaces is an area we've done quite a lot of work on this year. This was brought back in house in January from Serco. We've restructured the team, brought the staff onto the London Living Wage. Um, we have, a lot of work has been done on clearing a historic backlog of items that hadn't been touched uh, by the old contractor. Um, and further work carry on that, including uh, catching up on work we needed to do on assessment of trees. Um, I'm pleased to tell you that Plashet Park has been awarded its green flag again. We thought last year was the last year we'd have funding for that. We've been able to have that and the team have now been set by the new manager uh, gaining more green flags for other parks in 2021 so other areas of the borough will start to benefit from that and for, on that we'll be bringing forward our new green spaces strategy in 2021 a big piece of work has been done to assess the work is needed across the board in terms of refurbishment and development and our new tree strategy will be part of that too um Further restructures, the parking service, as I think councillors will know, was brought back in house. We've now finished restructuring that service to make sure it's on terms with terms and conditions and again introduced the London Living Wage. We're now doing rationalising work on the car pound in terms of clearing uh, historic items and uh, new ways of working down there. Um, the final piece of restructuring currently going on is in the highways department. That will be the last section of my department to be restructured. They've become a historic dependency on agency staff there. That's being addressed to bring in permanent staff um, and recruitment is, will, will be started very shortly to ensure we move away from agency to permanent full-time council staff on council terms and conditions. And just to finish on this section for you, just to let you know, in terms of management, we have a new green spaces manager um, who will be brought in from Burgess Park in South London at the beginning of the year. We have a new permanent parking manager joining us from January. A new permanent director of public realm also joins us in January. 
thank Ken Clark uh, for his help in terms of the recruitment panel for that, much appreciated. And the new permanent director of highways will join us in February. And I think that's the first time in living memory we will have a full permanent management team along with the restructure of all the departments. So a lot of internal work has go gone on from uh, senior management to kind of get the back end right. So we'll start to see the front end uh, real improvements, I hope, in 2021. And I think Mill Luther may just have something she wants to add on the end of that. Hi, thanks, James. Yes, um, further to um, what Councillor Asa has just said, we are working on streamlining and improving our communication strategy. Um, we understand that the success of what we're trying to do in terms of bringing um, behaviour change will depend on the messaging. And that's why we have a dedicated communications officer to help raise awareness of the work that we're currently trying to do um, on social media, local press and any other available platform. One of the key areas that we are working on is air quality and we are currently working on a comprehensive strategy currently in progress on um, on bringing in the key areas of um, policies that we are introducing in this administration if that's low traffic neighborhoods um, emissions parking system or changes to our recycling policy um, the main objectives are to increase awareness of our air quality crisis, raise awareness of the health implications to long term exposure to air pollution, increase awareness of Council's activity, and also, and most importantly, highlight the success of the Council's um, work in this area. That's it. Okay. Thank you both for the overview of the work that has been undertaken by your department. And um, I wish you well with your newly appointed management team. Um, we look to see that you um, would be making life for the physical um, environment, the public realm, um, better for all. Thank you. Again, I've seen um, Councillor Daniel Repark. Go on. Yep. I was preempting your ask for questions, that's why. So I'm in the queue. I'm just okay. holding my place, Chair, holding my place. Okay, I, 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 I've noticed and I hear you. Okay, I will just um, continue. The, um, Councillor Asa, as you um, may know, um, members of this committee has compiled and sent key lines of inquiries to your office. And for this evening, we will be focusing on those key lines of inquiry. So from time to time, members will be coming in um, and ask questions around those key lines of inquiries, as well as supplementaries and um, questions. And it's, I will now move over to you formally and uh, for questions um, from members. But before I do, um, as a matter of courtesy, um, um, Jamie, do you have, um, is there anything that you would want to say at this stage? No, that's fine, Chair. Absolutely fine to carry on. Okay, thank you. I have noticed um, you, Councillor Lee Parker, but I had promised earlier um, that I would bring in Councillor Alicia Chaudhry at this point, at this juncture, because she has a question on highways, which she has indicated to me beforehand. Councillor Alicia Chaudhry, over to you. Uh, thank you so much. It's very kind of you. Um, and thank you, Councillor Asser, for attending this meeting. Um, now, I'm sure you are aware of uh, the street conditions. Um, and since we both represent the same ward, uh, Beckton, where we have more greens, um, my questions are along that line. And I believe we have. Um, more questions on parking related issues. And this is the reason why Chair has given me the opportunity to ask you the question in advance. Now, uh, th there are many upset and angry residents around us in terms of road conditions, street condition, street furniture, they look really ugly. So my question would be that, can you get an update on the program of work um, to improve the state of the roads, including uh, filling potholes and repair road, make them safe and attractive? Oh yeah, um, yes, is, 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 is the straightforward answer. So the Keep New Moon program, which is a program of road repairs continues. Um, we can certainly supply the forward panel of works to be done. Um, 
we made some changes last year in terms of the contract, in terms of how we were attending potholes. And I think the, the feedback on that is we've managed to increase the, the repair work on potholes. We are about to go out to uh, tender for the new uh, maintenance contract. The current contract was due to come to an end in January 2021. Cabinet agreed uh, last week just to an extension on the Conway contract for up to six months. Um, because we are slightly behind on the tendering due to the lockdown in the summer. Um, obviously, our staff weren't around to do the, the preparatory work, but equally when they got back, lots of the people who would be applying for that contract um, uh, were still in furlough. So now they're back. We, we, that, that, that tendering will begin um, just mm -hmm. after Christmas. So we will have a new contract on that. And part of that is looking at restructuring how we manage that. So rather than one big, it's broken down into smaller parts so that we can be more responsive. So the Keep Me Roman program will continue. Um, we'll be looking for other funding we can, but obviously the new contracts will allow us to be a bit more flexible on that. Um, so a follow-up question would be that, I mean, previously we used to, the, the ward councillors in every ward, I believe, um, same as Beckton, we used to, to have um, um, sort of like decide uh, or prioritise works, but currently we, I, I don't see any pattern on that. Um, so as ward councillors would be more aware of their local issues, do you think it's, there is going to be an opportunity for us to participate on decision-making and um, uh, um, prioritize the work program. Um, and, and sometimes some issues uh, could be more urgent than others, but at the moment, the urgency is not taken into a, um, consideration or account. Uh, what would you say about that? Uh, yes, is, is again a straightforward answer. So I've spoken to management in the department in the last month or so. One of the plans we want to bring forward in 2021 is the re-establishment of um, ward walkabouts with, with highways management and ward councillors so we can address uh, particular issues so councillors can input into that um, and I think we can look at other ways in terms of short-term discussions too um, so that there will be a kind of annual assessment with ward councillors so they get much more direct input. Um, one of the things the interim management have done is uh, make some changes in terms of the inspections um, so I've started to notice things that I used to have to report are now being picked up a, a, on a better inspection service. Uh, Jamie, we are to give you a bit more detail in that in terms of where the management works, but certainly we, we've sharpened up um, under the interim management, the inspection regime and, and the progress on that. But certainly in terms of engagement with all counts, that's definitely got to be something we need to start doing again. So we've done the back end restructuring this time, we can start doing that front end stuff and engaging with all councillors and picking up the kind of priorities and using their local knowledge is, is something I've already discussed with the management about bringing forward in 2021. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I will now- Supplementary. Yeah. Supplementary. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, go on. Uh, thank you, Chair. James, good evening. Um, uh, James, uh, I'm quite interested. You mentioned just now about the £100 million budget that there was for, for roads and, and lighting. Uh, and tell me if I'm right about this. I remember seeing a cabinet decision that was pulling some of that money away from that £100 million, uh, which is up there to be drawn down at whenever, um, to, to help with cycling uh, and other road issues, uh, changes that were taking place. Am I correct in saying that? Because I also understand that the road programme itself, the replacement and stuff that we've just been talking about, uh, Aisha, in terms of potholes, seems to have slowed down. Is that the reason why that's happened? So there was a slowdown over this year simply because works came to an end during the lockdown. We obviously didn't. So they're like everything else, it's been disrupted. There were some plans before the lockdown to start looking at how we spent the money, because at the moment it was very much focused on resurfacing. And actually there was an opportunity when we were doing road works to do some general improvements to the public realm, like Councillor Chowdhury was saying, you know, the street furniture and other things, and trying to make sure when you're doing it obviously works in terms of better economies of scale if you're doing the whole street scene rather than just the resurfacing is as important as that is. So that's what we were looking at. Obviously, there's been disruption this year in terms of a lot of the roadworks came to an end. Um, but we're, we're still trying to search for additional funding for that. So a lot of the money we've got in for some of the works we've done during the summer have been funded through uh, TFL grants and there is further transport uh, wow. Um, transport, and I can see Jamie waving. I think he can give you a bit more detail on the background in terms of funding. Yeah. 
Has the whole hundred million been spent now? Not yet. It's still a rolling program. So, so road surfacing and potholes should still be being yes. paid for out of that. Yeah. Because uh, you keep talking about additional funding, I just wondered why that was. Okay. Right. Um. Okay. Is there any other member on this section of highways, or if mm -hmm. not, I would move on. Mas Patel. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. And uh, my question actually is on the Keep New and Moving program. Um. What I, the feeling that I get from residents is that this program seems to have stalled quite significantly. Now, I understand the explanation you've given to uh, Councillor Clark in terms of the fact that the, the program is continuing. And I saw Jamie nodding uh, um, uh, furiously to, to confirm that. But what we haven't got is the program actually laid out um, on, on our website, on our communication uh, channels to say that yes, your pavement will get done because the promise, if I remember correctly, I'm sure councillors who were in the previous term can confirm, our promise to residents was that every single road and every single pavement within reason, because obviously some roads were quite new anyhow, but most of the pavements and most of the roads in the borough would be resurfaced. Have we still got that commitment is my question. Well, my understanding from talking to the previous manager who was gone, there was a discussion about what it would cost to do that and what money was available. So I think we may have said that the, the funding would never have paid for every road. But as you say, a lot of them don't need, wouldn't need doing because they are newer anyway. Um, Jamie was waving, so I can, I can pass that to Jamie to give you a bit of detail on where we are with the funding. And But in terms of the... Um, program i think it comes back to the point councillor Jahan was making early comments about um where we've been in terms of communication and certainly we can pick that up um in, in making sure it is clear what works are coming forward and what is, is in the pipeline because there is a a planned series of works for the year ahead and they're done there's an assessment done on on, on need in terms of the, the state of the roads and things um so we certainly we can publish that and publicize that jamie i think you can get jamie if, if I might, Jeff, so just picking up on a, on a, a couple of points that have been made. Um, so uh, just on, on that last point, to, to resurface 50% of the roads in, in the borough, you, you, 100 million would unfortunately not touch the um, touch the sides of that. So, I don't, but I, I'm not aware about what was said originally about the spend. There's a couple of years left in keeping Nuva moving, so there's, there's about 40 million pounds still to spend. Uh, I'm quite happy to, to get a, a written response back to um, the committee uh, to give some detail behind that about how much has been spent each year. I know there's been a significant mm -hmm. amount of investment in the street lighting network and most of that work has finished. We've got an ongoing programme of refurbishment of the pavements and resurfacing of roads. We are behind this year on that programme, uh, but the, the money will carry over. It's capital money, so we don't have to spend it by the end of the financial year. So those uh, roads will roll into next year. What I've asked um, officers to look at in the spring is a full condition survey, because that's something that's a, a key piece of information that we haven't got at the moment. Uh, and it's certainly um, a, a key document that I'd expect the authority to have, which is an absolute up to date condition survey of our roads and our footway. Uh, and what we will then do is to use that to inform the rest of the spend of the keep new uh, moving uh, capital and any additional capital that comes into the authority. I think there's one bit, and it, it may be I've, I've picked up the wrong thing. We've, we've got several different pots of money, but there's a number of different pots of money that we spend on the highway. So we've got the capital that comes in from keep new and moving. There's about two million pounds a year of revenue. Uh, that's spent on maintenance. Uh, a lot of that is about replacement of um, furniture, keep left bollards and railings and stuff that get knocked down in road traffic accidents. We, we don't always get the information back um, from, the, from the drivers to be able to claim on their insurance. So we spend about two million pounds on um, 
general maintenance. But again, we need to be better about how we focus that money and how we get ahead of some of the potholes. The reason why I'm doing the uh, condition survey in the spring is that clearly winter time, we tend to get a lot more uh, breaking up of the road surface. So there would be little point in doing it now rather than to leaving it a little bit later on. The other thing that we're doing in the new year is that we will be taking a design guide to uh, cabinet. And Councillor Clark, I think this picks up on some of your uh, your comment about the wider use of the keep new the keep newer moving capital. We'll be coming forward with suggestions about spending some of that money when we're going down a road and resurfacing it. Do we want to look at planting more trees? Do we want to put some build outs in? <coughs> Is there anything that we want to do about uh, cycle parking and such like? So those are some of the things that are happening in the new year. Chair, could I just uh, come uh, very quickly, uh, just uh, as a uh, as a response to the answers we've, we've been given, um, Jamie? With all due respect, I mean, I was quite um, um, involved in the sense that as a as a councillor, I wasn't in, uh, I didn't have any environmental portfolio responsibility, but I was I was lobbying quite a bit in terms of making sure we get a keep new and moving program sort of uh, on the path and. And in 2015, I think, um, you know, we kind of saw the vestiges of that come together and, 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 and the programme was in full flow. One of the things I, I certainly remember, the then director and the officers that were present in, uh, at that time um, were instructed by the mayor, um, then, the then mayor, to come up with a programme which would comprehensively resurface all of Newham's roads. And the figure, the figure they came up with was the 100 million, which is why we kept pushing this 100 million pounds investment. It was part of our manifesto, et cetera, et cetera, when we went to the electors in 2014. And we really pushed on the Keep New and Moving program, 100 million pounds investment, every single road and pavement will be resurfaced. Now, if that figure is incorrect, I'd like to know what the latest figure would be, because if we've made a commitment to residents, I think we need, you know, we still need to follow that commitment through, which I'm really pleased the lead member has actually um, committed, you know, confirmed that. And secondly, just as an aside, on the condition survey, I myself as an ordinary ward councillor very recently have seen uh, the condition survey uh, for some of the roads in my area. And previously, going back to just, just last year and the year before, I have seen a comprehensive condition survey for the rest of the borough because I think there was a moment where you know lots of areas were fighting for um, uh, pots uh, pots of money from the same budget to try and get their road further up the program. Every single road was going to be done, but some roads were wanted wanted to have more. Pro or some areas needed their priorities brought up. Certainly, Little Ilford, I certainly remember needed was an area which uh, benefited from that. So. In terms of the condition survey, I'm very concerned that we haven't now got an up-to-date condition. So I'm glad you've made the commitment to do that in the summer, oh, sorry, in the spring. But what it negates us as a, as a, as a, as a council... Can you put your uh, question, please, Councillor Patel? Yeah, my, my question is this. What, what, it, what, it, what it shows us is as a council, and I think it was alluded to by the lead member, we are certainly behind on making sure our roads are kept up to date um, whilst at the same time we're introducing uh, policies such as um, the, uh, the permit scheme, which I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to be uh, having a, a, a long discussion about. Um, how can the two go hand in hand when we've got poor roads not being done for such a long period of time and we're introducing low traffic neighbourhoods, parking permits, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. I think we really need to be mindful of that. I'm sorry, that is a very long question or statement, and I would only give you one minute to respond. I must move on. There's a lot on the agenda. Jamie. So uh, as far as the sort of condition surveys, we haven't got a, an up-to-date one of all of the roads. So, so what's happened in the past is that we've done condition surveys for part of the borough each year. Uh, over a three or four year period. So we need something that's far more up to date. I will look at the original uh, report that kicked off Keep New and Moving and see what was said there, uh, Councillor Patel. But as I say, in, in, in my view, there is absolutely no way that a, a, a hundred million, or it's a huge amount of money would be enough to, to do what you're, you're explaining there. I'm sure we'll come on to the, to the rest of the issues around permits and, and such like later on in the meeting. 
Thank you. I will just come by way of a supplementary. Um, this means to your response, um, you have 42 million um, pounds, and I take it that that's for road surfacing, pavements, and street lighting over how many years? I think it was originally down, but again, we, we'll go back to the original paper. It was a 10 year program and we've got four years left. So but you have for the two million over four years. Now they- It's about 10, the, the program's about 10, 10 million a year. Yeah. Okay. So the two million that you have for road furnitures, um, is that um, renewable every year or is just- Yeah, the, the, right, the, so sorry, uh, the, the chair, the two million is, is revenue. So that's for repairs. So we pay for potholes out of that and repairs to street furniture. That's that's like your your ongoing. Um, we you know we have um, a, a potholes that we're supposed to fix in yeah. twenty four hours or seven days. Okay, you've answered days. the question. Thank you, thank you very much. Now, colleagues, I'm going to be moving on to um, the matter that I know that is um, keeping you awake at nights: emission based parking. I am um, by way of direction, I'm going to be giving about one hour maximum for this um, item. I have noticed first um, Daniel who wants to speak, then it would be Ken and then Sue. Um, and I would take others as I see them. Daniel. Thank you, Chair. I had two questions. One of them was on the emissions-based parking scheme, but another was on the opposite side of Councillor Asser's portfolio, which was to do with the streets and the cleanliness of them. Um, I'll do the emissions-based parking first. Uh, in terms of that, can I just say thank you to Jamie and Councillor Asser for sending us the Equalities Impact Assessment. Um, I really do appreciate that. I had a good read of that. The one thing that I would like to point out, though, is that that impact assessment was done pre-coronavirus. And obviously, we all know that the world has changed substantially, not just for ourselves, but for our residents as well in that intervening time. So I would actually ask the question, is that impact assessment not actually out of date for a policy that's due to come into force in January? Because um, it seems to me that it is. And if it is out of date, is there any way that you would commit to doing a separate assessment uh, to actually see what the true impact will be on residents in real time in terms of uh, post-corona? Uh, the second question that I had, Chair, which I'll do them both at the same time to keep things quick, Thank you. was in terms of uh, fly tipping, Councillor Ass, I spoke to you about this previously, and you've told me of some of the things that you're doing to tackle it. Um, what I will say is that it may be anecdotal, but as a local ward councillor, my residents and I have noticed what seems to be an uptick in, in, in dumping and fly tipping. Um, and I just wondered what you and the officers were going to do to address this issue. I know you've told, talked about some of the programmes you're doing, but it seems to me as though we need something a little bit more than that. Thank you very much. OK, if I, I'll, I'll take them backwards, if I may, because I suspect a lot of the other questions will, will, will fit together slightly better that way around. So, yeah, so as I mentioned in my opening statement, we did a number of work with, with Keeper and Tidy. And so I think fly tipping, you have to divide into two categories, effectively, in the barrow. You've got what is your kind of professional man with a van moving furniture on, on the cheap and dumping it in the street. And then you've got what is kind of domestic fly tipping, which is people putting stuff in the street that, that should be putting bins and things. The programme we've got going on at the moment around with Keep Britain Tidy certainly tackles that latter, that latter part, and we've seen success. So in the pilot uh, scheme, we saw a 70% reduction in the, the places it was targeting, and those schemes have been brought together with um, interest from residents. We're now rolling those out, and I think in the paper we've given you where they've been hit in the, the kind of target areas, they're having a kind of 60% reduction. Um, so we're keeping rolling those out and see what impact there is. I think... Um, it, it's going to take time to turn around. We're going to have to do a lot more of those and we're moving that on. And there's some education programs we're doing as well. We've been doing some online stuff and we've been doing some um, publicity work too. Um, that is going to be a slightly slow burn, but I think where we're starting to hit those already in terms of those pilots that have now been turned into so the CSI tape and the, the chalk paintings are having to have effect. And we're trying to target those where we know we've got particular problems. It is a bigger problem in terms of the people who are being paid to dump 
dump waste on the streets. And that's a it's what is a national problem, is a particular London wide problem. Um, I think we're gonna have to look at do more enforcement around that. And I think that ties in with the new director of public realm coming in. He has certainly had some success in Redbridge and tackling that. And I think we're gonna have to we're gonna we're certainly gonna need to do more work on that in terms of prosecutions. Um additional powers would be helpful and I know lots of councils around the world country are complaining about the difficulties they have, particularly in the, the decisions courts make when we take it to prosecution. But there's certainly been, I think, a problem since the pandemic started in the amount of waste we're getting, because certainly uh, the tonnage we're collecting in terms of bin collections has soared because a lot of people are at home, we're getting a lot more deliveries, and that seems to have increased in terms of the amount of old furniture that's going out, the amount of um, large packaging that's going out, which I think is probably what's causing some of the, the seeming uptick in terms of uh, what we're seeing on the streets. So be interested. Mr. Can you wrap up? I think you've answered the question already. Sorry, yes. Okay, so sorry, I was, I was going into detail. And so therefore, you only have one minute for the next one, the impact assessment. Yep, I can ask Jamie to we'll update where we are on this, but certainly we are, we are more than happy to keep looking at the quality impact assessment. And I think um, a lot of it looks at... Um, a lot of it looks at things that I don't think have changed. I think it's the economic side that probably you're touching on. Um, I don't know if Jamie wants to input on that at the moment. Uh, I, I won't uh, for the moment, if you, if you don't mind, Councillor. I've got a, a horrible feeling that um, you have been, indeed been sent the old impact assessment and not the one that, that's been recently prepared. I was just madly trying to scroll through some of my emails and stuff. So, so leave that one with me, um, uh, Councillor, and uh, I'll we'll get uh, something else circulated because I think something may well have gone wrong now. Because we have updated it. Okay. Yeah, I know, and, and, but I can't find it. That's why I was confused. Well, I would, um, Councillor, do you want to ask a supplementary? Yeah, I do, actually. Can I just say, and just note my displeasure, not if we haven't received the correct documents, because this does seem to happen quite often, that we come to scrutinise the executive and we're not given the proper materials to do so. And I think, quite frankly, that that's a disservice to our residents. What I would say is if you have updated the uh, impact assessment, number one, it would be great if we could see it, and that's all great and well. But I will say to Councillor Asser, in terms of your answer on fly tipping, you said a lot, but you didn't say much, to be honest, and I don't want to be mean spirited in, in my um, <laughs> characterisation of your answer. But ultimately, from what I've seen is we've got stencils and we've got crime scene tape that's going around things in conjunction with Keep Britain Tidy. But to be honest with you, I think in Plasto North, it's gone a bit past that. I think we need action. And I think our residents want to see action. You spoke about prosecutions. And I think that's what residents want to see. They want to see a much harder line on it. And that's what I would hope to be seeing from you as the lead member for environment is a much tougher stance on this, because ultimately we all have to live in this environment. And I don't know about you, but I want to be able to come out of my front door without fear of tripping over a duvet. Thank you. Councillor yeah. um, Asi, you have one minute to respond. I agree. And if, if the guidance of scrutiny is they want it to go stronger, I think in the past we've done sort of naming and shaming and that kind of stuff. And I think there was some reluctance to continue that previously because of um, negative reaction. But if that is the guidance of scrutiny in terms of they're happy to go with that line, I'm certainly to, happy to look at how we can take tougher measures on that. Okay, um, is there any member, and if any member wants to come on in the supplementary with this, I'm only going to allow one member. Any member on the supplementary? Um, Mariam. Councillor Darwood. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Um, asking those questions, um, Councillor Lee Parkway, and thanks for the answer, um, Councillor Assa. But just to follow up on what you said, you mentioned Red as a borough that tackles fly tipping quite effectively, but they also have a free bulky waste collection service. And I think what Councillor Lee Parkway might be referring to is since we've gotten rid of that service, there has been an increase in fly tipping on our streets. I can specifically in Manor Park Ward, and we've seen mattresses bulky waste items that could have been collected by the council now dumped on the street uh, more than more than previously. So do you think that getting rid of that collection service has led to some of this increase in flight? 
Uh, simple answer is no. Um, what I said about Redbridge was the director we got from there has been quite successful in terms of the way he's managed the service, and I think will bring some benefits to that. All evidence, and this is the evidence that um, keep bringing tidy will back this up, is that and it, it's not just here, it's elsewhere, is the changes in terms of whether you, 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 cost, you, you charge for bulk waste or not didn't make any difference. In terms of when we brought the charge in originally, it didn't make a difference. By making it free, it didn't make a difference. The blunt answer is if you're the kind of person who's going to throw stuff on the street, you're probably not the kind of person who's going to book a collection in the first place. One thing we did see was actually the lack of a decline in uh, donations to charities and stuff. But um, ultimately, I think if you're if you if you're not if you're not going to book, I think it there there is a there is a mentality if you're going to dump stuff on the street, you're going to dump stuff on the street because that's an easy easy thing to do, and you're not going to go through the process in the first place. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Asher, for your answer. And I must move on to, um, sorry, I cannot take any more supplementary on this one. Time is moving. Um, Councillor Ken Clark. Uh, thank you again, Chair. And can uh, we keep our questions um, brief and our response? I'll I do my best because I think this is a very, well, I want to talk about the, 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 the parking uh, uh, charges. Uh, and, and basically, in my six and a half years or over that now, being a, a member in in, in Durham, I've never seen the like of the amount of people uh, that are writing to me, that are ringing me up uh, about parking. I've never seen the like of it. And we've gone through quite a number of difficult stages in the bank. Uh, and, and what I get, the vast majority uh, are uh, obviously uh, extremely worried uh, about the charges being imposed at this time. Most of us totally agree with the, you know, the admission uh, in clearing up the, the air quality that we have in there. Everyone seems to uh, fa fairly unanimously agrees to that issue. But there is a lot of resistance now from people simply saying that basically during the pandemic, uh, these charges should be paused. Now, I understand that the, uh, that the cabinet, and I read the paper that went to the cabinet, um, actually did, the officers did make quite a very, very good case for what I'm saying, but you decided, whatever reason, no doubt budgetary reasons, only to give a 20% discount. A lot of the mailbox I'm getting now saying that isn't enough. They are really struggling with all the, the things that they that they have to do and pay for. Uh, and I, I know you've done well to get the 20%, but that most of our members and most of our residents are very, very unhappy about it. Most of them are losing their jobs. 72,000 are on furlough and, and, and unemployment is going up every day. And also the, the amount of people that have got the virus is going Please up. Please put your day. question now, Councillor. Well, I'm just, asking, I'm just asking, James, whether they can still at this moment in time actually re reflect on what is going on in the borough and the large number of people that are, that are sort of crying out. I've heard tonight, and I, you might want to put, uh, uh, confirm this, uh, James, that we understand you're going to offer an instalment uh, plan now as well. If you could in, confirm that to me later, I'll be clever. And one last question, Chair, it's about the monitoring. Uh, have we ever done monitoring to show us, modelling that would show us what the benefits would be in the next few months after after January, the effects of our environment and our clean air in this borough. Thank you. Okay, I will give you. Um, that's a very long question. I given the gravity of the question. I give you no more than three minutes. Okay, and give give me a. To, and if you are going to bring in support in answering that, or of it must be within the three minutes. Thank you. Okay, if you can give me a wave if I look like I'm running out of time, that would be helpful because I'm, I'm not timing myself. Um, look, this is never going to be an easy decision and I don't think it was ever going to be something that was popular. Nobody is ever going to support charging for something that was free. Um, we are facing an extremely difficult situation. We have the worst air pollution in, in the country and we are one of the few, the, one of only two boroughs in, the, in, in London that doesn't charge for this. This was passed as part of our three year budget back in February and I appreciate circumstances have changed. And one of the reasons we moved to bring in the 20% discount is an acknowledgement of that um, and an attempt to assist residents and make that easier. It is extremely difficult. Um, it is, this is hardwired into the budget and that happened before, before the pandemic kicked in. 
Um, so we are making measures to try and ease it as coming in. I know it was never going to be popular. It will bring long-term benefits to the borough. Um, in terms of what it's going to do in health in terms of our environment is that uh, evidence is now coming forward that um, long-term conditions like asthma, which we are particularly poor, are having a direct impact on COVID. And additionally, dirty air is, seems to be having an impact on the, the amount of people getting it and the, the condition they're getting it to. So we are, so we have looked at, and I, and I appreciate it's difficult. Parking changes are always the most controversial things that any council does. In terms of the question, I realize I'm probably short of time, um, on instalment payments, yes, we will be looking in 2021 to bring forward instalment payments to make that easier. And I'll be discussing that with, with backbench councillors and consulting councillors on how we bring that forward and, and, and setting up a system to, to make that easier. Um, it's, it's not an easy system, I appreciate that. In terms of modelling, if I have some time, Chair, um, yeah. I've spoken to other boroughs where they've introduced this, or 18 other boroughs have already got emissions-based uh, systems in place. It is difficult in terms of but it's narrowing it down as to where the direct impact, partly because you need to know what's going to happen. If nobody changes their vehicles, then the impact will be negligible. If everyone changes the vehicle, it, it will be quite large. Obviously, there'll be something in between that. What we've seen in other boroughs is a reduction in as people change their cars. You um, have one minute um, more, Councillor. Thank you, Tony. Um, is a reduction in the number of other heart, the more um, polluting types of cars and reduction cars overall. So we are talking to other boroughs. It is difficult to model in terms of where you go because we need to know what the reaction will be. Um, but we'll, we will be monitoring it over the year ahead. Can I just quick supplementary, Tony? One, one line. One line. Uh, James, could you tell me how much revenue you will bring in uh, from the, these charges in the first and second and third year? Yep. So I'm just trying to find the figure for you. I think it is um, 3.5 million. And the second year? And the second year? Well, the... I could try, try coming on that one, Councillor Asser. So, so the estimates at the moment are somewhere between three and a half and four million, and that's going to depend on uh, how many people renew their permits and, and, and whether there's any changes. And then we've modelled a 5% reduction in income every year for the next four years uh, on the basis that, that, that that's what we think potentially will happen with people changing uh, cars through the emission banding. All of the information that we've got is based on the uh, DVL, DVLA data uh, from uh, 2019. Uh, we are looking to update that for, for 2020. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, is Before I move away from this particular line of questioning, is there any supplementary on it? Um, I've seen some hands raising. I've seen Dan and Alicia. Are they, also, right, are they supplementary to this question? About emissions parking, yes, definitely. Yeah. But, but I know... Like I know, Susan, that you have questions in your own rights, but do you want to ask a supplementary to Ken's question? No, you don't, because you, um, I see you seems puzzled. Councillor Lee Parkway. Um, okay, I'm going to be honest. I don't think it's a supplementary to Ken's, but I have more questions. No. But I'll let okay, so um, you would have, you'd have to park that one. Yes, Alicia, do right. you have a supplementary to uh, Ken? Uh, uh, yes, just a quick one that um, um, I can understand the air quality and I can understand the reason we are charging. But I fail to understand that by charging for the first car, how are we going to be improving on our air quality? Because every single individual residence would have uh, their first car, doesn't matter how much you charge, they might struggle to pay, but um, it is not helping our air quality, is it? I mean, how is it going to help? If you can answer me, please. It helps air quality in terms of influences the types of cars and the types of the vehicle fleet. I mean, initially, if nobody, as I said, if nobody changes anything, then and it doesn't. But what evidence is from other boroughs is that people will change their cars in terms of um, reviewing whether, you know, if you've, if you've got two or three cars, whether you need as many cars as that, whether you, what type of mission base you've got, um, removing older cars. We've seen that from other boroughs and that there is a, is a change in um, the types of cars people have. So it, it may not be immediate within the first few months, but over a period of time, it will. 
which are people losing losing their job they are struggling to keep their current car this was my question actually okay um, can we have a brief answer to that and um, no more than one minute well i think we need to have a look at what the correlation was between um uh, jobs and people having cars. I mean, we do know that in this borough, the, the majority of households don't have access to a car, and certainly the poorest I work. And that correlation would be that the poorest households are the ones that tend to be carless. And we know there's been an increase, a move across London wide to re increase the number of households without cars. Um, I don't think it necessarily follows automatically that um, Lots of jobs necessarily goes with, with car-based driving because a lot of people wouldn't necessarily use that to go to work. You would need to do a study in terms of a correlation between people losing jobs and car-based. Thank you. I've now seen um, Councillor Masters, who's going to be doing our question, and after that, Councillor Patel. And those are the two names that I've seen, two persons I've seen. Councillor Masters. Okay, so we've, I think for me, what really, really affected me with this issue is the diversity of the residents who've been protesting about this. I mean, I've had everybody from neighbours who would traditionally be Greens through people who are worried about the impact on their families. I mean, there are three areas, really. We've already sort of dealt with the economic impacts. Um, I think the other two are the level of uh, scientific evidence and you, you you said there's this kind of nudge but I think it's, a, it's slightly disingenuous in the sense that if all our residents would sort of take your advice and sort of go to other cars we don't have the infrastructure which seems sort of terrifically unfair but finally the the other thing which no one's touched on yet which I think is a really important aspect is the controversy around the consultations in this and I think uh, in the interest of our residents, it, it would be good to hear how the consultation that actually voted, or two consultations that actually voted against the charges were justified, and the role of the parking consultation in this, and the fact that the consultation took place after Cabinet had passed this. If you could sort of explain the, the process, because it, it, for a, an administration which uh, had a manifesto claim to be a beacon of democracy. I think a lot of residents are sort of really, really struggling for the consultation results. So consultation comes in four sections. We originally started under my predecessor in 2019 on looking at wider parking review. Um, this was then within the three year budget and that was part of the budget consultations and plans around emission based parking, which we took place in that. We did an informal consultation in the, early in the spring, um, which we had a very large response to, which you are right, was largely uh, overwhelmingly opposed to. And then there was a statutory consultation, which was required um, in the autumn before we made the final announcement. Um, that would have been done earlier, but we delayed it so we weren't doing the statutory consultation as part or during the pandemic because that would have been seemed unfair. But the biggest response was in the informal consultation we did in the spring. Now I accept it was there was overwhelmingly uh, a vote against. That doesn't surprise me. I do not. I, I'm not sure we would ever get to a point where. If you say to people, would you like to pay for something that you currently get for free, you would get a vote in favour. Um, there is plenty of evidence of that of local councils doing that when they used to do referenda on um, increasing council tax. People always voted for the lowest possible option. Um, ultimately, you as have one minute more. I was just going to say, ultimately, as a politician, you have to weigh up all the evidence of what you think is in the best interest of your borough and take that decision. If it is unpopular, if it is not going then frankly, you take the consequences of that. But equally, in terms of responses, um, we had 10,000, I think, um, out of a much larger population, and we have 55,000 permits. So I accept it is not a popular decision, but I think sometimes in politics, you have to do what you think is right. And if that's a difficult decision, an unpopular decision, you have to wear the consequences of it. Right. Go on, Susan. Isn't there a problem with that, though? Because if we're sort of telling our residents we're going to be a beacon of democracy, it's the times when we ask them about the things they care about that um, are going to be the times they sort of remember. Um, and 
it, it just worries me that we, we this is an instance where we've asked them for their opinion and, and they said no when we've got a, gone ahead at, anyway. Um, I mean, it, do, you, do you feel, do you have any regrets about the way the consultation was, was carried out? Could, could it have been done differently? I think if I had a time machine, Councillor Masters, we would have started this earlier and um, we would have done a lot of this sooner. Um, and that's what I would, have, I would have changed, I think, and we would have started perhaps a year or two sooner in terms of the consultation. I think in regards of where we've got to, I think we've got the evidence coming through on the situation in our borough in regards to the impact on pollution. We have to take quite strong action on this. And, we're starting to see again in this week announcements from government on targets for 2030 of emissions. And I suspect we're going to see all councils being driven towards uh, schemes around this because we're going to have to take some, some strong action if we're going to hit the targets we're now being required to, to deliver on. It comes back to me about health. We have the highest air pollution in the country. And we have some of the worst health outcomes on the back of that. I think it is our duty as a council to take action on that. I think it's difficult and unpopular in the short term. I think it will benefit in the medium to long term. And the chair said, you know, it's something that's keeping people awake. Trust me, I've lost lots and lots and lots of sleep about making sure we, we try and get this right and do the right thing. But the thing that haunts me is somebody coming to me in 10 years time and saying, you knew how bad it was, what did you do? And saying, I, we, we did nothing. I think the right decisions are sometimes the hardest ones. And I appreciate this is incredibly difficult. Um, but I still think we're taking the right decision. But isn't the problem, though, that this is, this is a, a parking policy? So you could have somebody who sort of listens to all the evidence on asthma and just sort of decides that they're going to sort of drastically cut their sort of number of journeys. And yet they're going to be paying for the, the same for their permit as somebody of the same model of car who is still sort of using their car for every short hop. It just doesn't seem to be a very effective way of sort of actually... Uh, impacting on, on that particular issue, particularly in a borough that, as we know, has an airport, has the Silver Town, Town Tunnel coming, has uh, a new distribution centre coming into the Royal Docks. Um, how convinced are you that this, this kind of policy is going to have enough of a weight against all the other things that are kind of going on in our borough? So I think two parts to that. I think the first one is it's on its own, it needs to be part of a package of measures, which it is. We've started taking other measures around um, cutting rat running and stopping people taking a shortcut for a borough. That's where things like the low traffic neighbourhoods come in. Um, they stop traffic coming through. We've seen this week um, uh, the work we took on around Brown Road Bridges had a big reduction in air pollution there and has reduced the number of tra amount of traffic coming through from that way. And that's been some joint work with Roadbridge. We've also done some work. I think things like the Healthy School Streets, which shop, stop um, uh, short journeys to schools, are hugely important because a lot of what you want to do is stop short travel. So, and also. Um, you mentioned infrastructure that's hugely important about making sure people get alternatives and we are talking to tfl as well about where we can develop and expand on public transport and other options too so it has to be part of a package of measures and it will be and we're starting to see some of that money come forward and i'm be optimistic that we'll see more money come on that now the government will announce extra targets just to, touch, to round up. just to touch on the other point you said about silvertown tunnel we are completely opposed to and if we can stop it we would. Um, in terms of the distribution centre, that has not been gone through um, planning yet, and I don't think there's an application in. We sent it back after the first one. I'm not on plan committee, but I have spoken quite publicly. I spoke at a public meeting opposing that, and I don't. I think it is the wrong thing in the wrong place, and I will say so to my dying breath and do what I can to stop it because I don't think it should be there. So those kind of schemes we should be trying to stop. Okay, can I supplementary, please? Yes, Councillor Lee Park. Thank you. Um, I agree with Councillor Asser when he says about the benefits. Uh, it definitely will benefit the council in our finances. But in terms of the air quality, that has yet to be proven. And as you rightly said yourself, that you don't know. You don't know if this is actually going to make things better or worse. One thing I would say to you, as part of a package, you, Les, I would say, is going to be a much more larger contributing factor to the improvement of air quality in our borough than the emissions-based parking scheme, because that is a London-wide scheme. Or it's going to 
push people, as it has done many residents already, to change their cars to less polluting cars, I would actually say that if there is any sort of decrease, it's probably down to you, Les, as opposed to our policy. And does it not just look like we are trying to essentially fill our coffers at the expense of our residents if people's cars are you, Les, compliant, but they still have to pay this emissions-based parking charge? Thank you. No, I disagree. One minute. Uh, you, Les, yes, thank, you. thank you. You disagree. Okay. I know, I, can I can I finish the can I finish the answer, Tony? Because I think it's quite okay. important the detail. Um, I disagree because ULES only tackles one type of pollution. Um, it's largely as it's been set up to tackle commercial vehicles. Now it's been very successful in removing about forty four thousand vehicles off the roads of central London, mainly commercial lorries and coaches and things. You can have a ULES compliant SUV, um, but clearly that wouldn't be in any way, shape or form counted as a green vehicle. Um, it, so ULES tackles a type of pollution. It doesn't tackle across the board. So this is why you've got lots of councils doing emissions based schemes. It is a part of the package again, but it wouldn't tackle the, what, the whole range of pollutants we need to tackle in terms of the he addressing health benefits in our borough. Yeah, sorry. I, I, I'm going to be very, very quick. Just in terms of those particles. 30 seconds. Are, literally, in terms of those particles you're talking about, it doesn't address. Are you talking about like PM10 and PM2.5, etc., those sorts of particles? Yeah. Now, I understand some of that comes from emissions, but a lot of that is things like brake dust and other things like that, which even electric vehicles have. So in terms of you being able to tackle that on our own as a council, I have to say, I'm not necessarily convinced that we're going to be able to do that, to be honest with you. And I think ULES does, a, does deal with the areas that it can, if that makes sense, which is the type of vehicles and the type of engines that they have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Mariam Darwood, is supplementary? Do you have a supplementary or is it a question in your own right? I have a supplementary question. This, okay. yeah. This committee was told that the purpose of the charge was to to electric vehicle, but how can we expect residents to shell out money on a new car in the middle of a recession? Sorry, could, I, I lost uh, Councillor Dower in the middle of that, so I heard electric and then recession, but I did miss the middle bit. Could someone repeat the and question? We were told. We were told um, we were told as a committee I would have to bring you back that this car is being put in place in order my internet is you, um, I tell you what if you type your question in the chat I will, or someone would ask it on your behalf, your internet is um, um, thank you yeah. okay, right um, James, I have um, I have some questions too um, supplementary to ask you on this one. Susan um, talked about communication. So she talked about the survey. Now, with eyesight, and do you think that if you had um, a better communication strategy and communicate to residents um, the, um, why you're really doing this about the asthma, the pollution, et cetera, and that the results might have been slightly better than you've got. Because some residents are um, seeing it as just a way of make the council making money. But we know it's, and from the papers that I've seen, it's much more than making money. It's about um, the health benefits that would arrive um, derived from this. Do you think that um, with insight, as I said, if your communication strategy was better, it might have had a better um, outcome. That's one. Um, um, secondly, um, <laughs> um, tell me, is it by the CC of the car or by the emission output of the car? Which one is this actually based on? Okay, on the communications, look, I'm never going to say communications can't be better because I think they always can be, um, and that's the honest answer. We brought in additional help to, to um, do communications around this, someone who's worked on communications around parking strategies before, and we've done a, a kind can of... Can you speak uh, up, please? Sorry, can you hear me okay? Yes. Sorry, Tony. Um, yeah, so we brought in additional help in terms of communications around this and someone who's worked on um, parking communication strategies before, but I'm never going to say communications can't be better as an old comms officer. I know you can always do it better with, with, when, when you review it and look back at it. Um, 
I suspect that with any kind of difficult conversation like this, there is a long conversation to be had about persuading people. And sometimes you can't persuade people until they see the benefits from it. Council Masters made the point about uh, people who are environmentally interested um, um, being unhappy with this. And this is something we've seen in other boroughs where actually um, it is quite even a difficult sell with people who are on board with the agenda sometimes because it does cause personal disruption. So I think, yes, we can always make it better um, and we are working very hard to make sure we get the message out there. But I'm, I'm never going to, to say we couldn't be too better on things because that, that would be just too arrogant. So would you, um, is there any plans to improve and to communicate with residents? Because now that um, cabinet has made the decision to go ahead, and residents still feel aggrieved and still think that is a way of making money. Do you have any plans of actually actively communicating with residents to sell the health benefits? We have a communications plan which we're implementing at the moment. Everybody who has a permit has been contacted directly. There are further contacts going out. Um, so we have a package of things we're bringing forward. We're going to continue to do that in terms of public communications, in terms of through the press and through terms of direct communication. So that is all stuff we're doing and we will keep following it up because I think it is really important to keep telling people why we're doing this, but also make sure people are aware of what, what, what benefits and effects it, it will have. And as, as Councillor Johan said at the beginning, we, we brought in additional uh, common support because um, frankly, we needed additional support in terms of getting our messaging out and we've now got a dedicated communications officer to deal with that. From, okay, so from members' feedback, um, it's not working too well because the public feel very aggrieved. So obviously there's a lot of work to be done there to take the public along um, with the council. Second, my second part um, so oh, Sorry, Chair, can I just interject and say, am I going to be called to ask my question? Because you did- Yes, you will be called. Thank you. You will be called. Um, this is just some supplementary. There's um, a lot of supplementaries. Is, is it by CC or by um, emission? Um, um, output of a vehicle. I'm going to bring Jamie in to give you the technical details because he'll explain it better than me, but it's based on the DVLA um, categories. Uh, so it's emissions based, Chair, on the DVLA categories. Okay. Um, thank you. I would um, come back to that. Now, I've seen um, Councillor Mas Patel and I haven't seen any other member after that. So, Councillor Patel. Yes, thank you, Chair. I appreciate you uh, seeing me. Um, obviously, in my previous role, I was the uh, Climate Commissioner uh, for the borough. So I'm only uh, very well aware of the damage and the, the impact of uh, PM2 and PM10 uh, particulates has on, on young people, on, on people all throughout the, you know, the, the different ages that uh, make up the residents of this borough. My problem is, and I think Councillor Lee Parkway touched on this, and I think um, it'd be good to hear your, your opinion on this, uh, uh, James. It's a two-pronged sort of question. When he said that ULEZ will make more of an impact than our policy, I think what he was alluding to is the fact that older cars, older vehicles are being taken off our roads. We've got the um, grants that were given to, uh, to take off the uh, trucks and the lorries from the road. Um, and there's also, uh, I think, a £2,000 grant for... Um, uh, people on benefits to replace their vehicles. And I know a lot of manufacturers are also offering their own grant schemes so that it encourages people to take um, the cars off the road. In terms of take up, I have to say, um, uh, the success rate has been a bit hit and miss. And I'm pretty sure as we get towards October, 2021, when it's mooted to be introduced, I think the take up will be much higher. And I think people will be very, very focused on actually changing their cars over. So the impact of this policy is the impact of the policy being seen in the lens of purely um, uh, uh, air quality, or is it a revenue raising uh, um, uh, uh, policy where you know, we've had uh, an admission that it's gonna bring three and a half to four million pounds per year in terms of an income. Now, what it does is, I mean, I remember standing up in town hall and, and, and making a speech on this and I said, we're not anti-car, we're anti-carbon because that's where our focus has to be. Why? Because transport, it's a mod, it's the modern horse. You will always need cars. You will also always need deliveries, you know, whether it's, you know, whichever way, shape or form it is, we will need these vehicles to transport goods, services and people. So my question is, 
on this particular point, and it ties into the communications thing, we have certain members of the administration claiming that this, without this money, we're going to be bankrupt. And then we have yourself, with all due respect, you've been very consistent on this, where you say, actually, we need to improve air quality. Now, which is it? Because if it's one, or is it, it sorry, is it one or is it the other? Because if it's to improve air quality, there's a the impact that we will have with our policy on parking permits by, in effect, giving every single car user a parking ticket because it's £60, so that's the equivalent of a parking ticket, I think will have a negligible impact. Actually, you want to charge £500. You want to charge £1,000 if you, will, if you really want to tackle air quality and, in, and encourage people to cycle, walk and go around the borough without using their cars. So my fear is that, again, in our communication, in the administration's communication, you've, you're sending so many mixed messages. We are ending up, as ordinary councillors, having to bear the burden of those mixed messages because of the plethora of emails and, co and, concerns, no, no, sorry, and concerns by residents who are saying this policy is punishing them. And I think we really need to look at that. That needs to be straightened out. I'd like your view on that. And secondly... Um, before the policy came into, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm at a slight advantage because the very first meeting when this policy was going to be formulated, I, I happened to be invited to the meeting and Jamie was there and so were yourself. We had a range of options in terms of how we can roll this policy out. And I seem to remember, and you can maybe give us more information on this, that there was an option where, a, where we could phase this in over a number of years, number one, and number two, where the majority of car owners or car users, whilst being encouraged by you less to change their cars and getting into the habit of actually paying for a residence permit, we could charge them around the £20 mark, which is the cost of the administration. I think Jamie can correct what the cost of the administration of such a scheme is. So that, and, and I think something like that could still happen were we to be brave enough and say, actually, because of COVID, we still want to introduce the policy, but because of COVID, rather than giving a 20% discount, look at those options again and, and consider the option that I certainly saw where a majority of car owners would be charged something very, very nominal to run the scheme, which is around the £20 mark. So those two points are the ones that I really want you to focus on and give me an answer and give us all an answer. And as I said, James, I think I just want to say this is not a, a, a slanging match or to, to call you out. Please don't take it personally. Yeah. Obviously, I'm just trying to tease out because I'm pretty sure there are residents who are yeah. watching yeah. this and are very, very concerned. I want to see a lot of scrutiny on this. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Given um, that is two questions, very <laughs> weighty questions, I will give you um, three minutes or so. James. Okay, don't, don't worry, Maz, I never take it personally. Um, I have to say that <laughs> I, I, the, um, I think the, uh, the, the point you make about if you really want to make a difference, we would have a massively higher charge is something I've had actually from elements of, of the Green Lobby. Um, one of the real well, things we looked very, and I can imagine the questions I'd be answering here if I had put it up to about a thousand pounds. I mean, a number of boroughs are significantly higher than that. One of the things we we looked at, and it was a difficult decision to make, is that balance between what we think will make an impact, but also taking into account the the, the demographic finances of the borough and trying to find a balance between that, which is what we have tried to do, and that was in all the original papers when we. With this is that we have tried to bring, come forward with a scheme we think would make an impact but in a way that it remains affordable to people the point you were making i think about the 20 pounds was you're right that's roughly uh, from memory the uh, cost of administrating it and at the moment that's we're, we're, we're subsidizing the, the first permit because we're not charging administration costs that was part of the discussion as to whether we had a flat fee I still think a flat fee is not a progressive policy because it doesn't reflect the different types of vehicles people drive. It also doesn't allow people to move in a way that um, reduces their costs. We had a long discussion as well about whether we should ever have a free permit in terms of a zero emissions charge for the bottom end um, and whether we should cover that, administra that administrative cost. We decided in the first year in the end to go for zero and 
remain at sub speed because it meant that those vehicles down a, who were electric and, and the more modern hybrids, which will also include quite a significant amount of our, our self employed uh, minicab drivers, which there are a significant number in the borough, are going to be in that bracket, which, which helps some of our poorer residents. So we were trying to establish a balance between. Um, achieving the air, the air quality stuff, but also a system that would be affordable and wouldn't be too penalising, because some of the other boroughs at the top end, it is £800 and that, and that kind of level, and I'm not sure that's affordable in a borough like Newham. So what we've done is, as part of this discussion, is try to find a balance between both of those things. Just what, if I've got time, Councillor Carmen, uh, just one thing on, on I think... Uh, yes, you have one minute more, yes. On, on, on the finances, I think it's worth pointing out at this stage, because you mentioned the money that will come in, saying that is ring fence for reinvestment in transport um, projects. Um, now, how we spend that is obviously a matter of discussion, perhaps comes back around to Councillor Chowder's original question about discussion with ward councillors. <coughs> All money raised from parking revenue is ring fence for the transport area, so it can be reinvested in our highways and in our schemes. And I know um, some of the schemes that you know you would, I imagine you would want to put forward yourself in terms of, of your interest. So, I think that's an important point to make. Uh, just, just a supplementary, if I, if, if I will, on that, uh, if I will, on James's final point, I'll, I'll, I'll give other members a chance. Of course, they've been waiting very patiently. I think um, the, the, the the area which still hasn't been answered sufficiently for my liking is this issue about about communications and also consultation. Remember, you're introducing a policy where the consultations both came back negative. So, in a sense, we're pushing policy through. Okay. And what we're doing is we've got absolutely, you know, I'll be completely honest, we've got terrible communications. And, and if, if we look back at what happened on Green Street, the fiasco where parking bays were taken out on the pretext of COVID, we had all the businesses out there. It was all over social media. And, and then it, it got, it, there was a U-turn and, and some got reinstated. And I, and I understand there's a petition. Shall we put those questions, please? No, yes, yes, yeah, sorry, sorry. My, my question is that... When we're doing this, we have to be very, 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 very careful about how we do it, because I think what's happened is the administration has damaged the cause of climate emergency in the borough by doing a really poor job of communicating the reasons as to why this policy was being introduced. And I think that's become a fatal flaw in this policy. I'm very uncomfortable with it. And I really hope, James, from this discussion... Question, please, Councillor yeah, I'm hoping that from this discussion, you take this forward and somehow try and correct this, because at this moment in time, even people who are, who are passionate environmentalists are having problems with communicating, and it's causing a divide in this community. There's a mixture of statement and question there. I don't know how you're going to take that, James, but you have one minute to decipher it. <laughs> I, have heard, I have heard what Councillor Council Patel has said, and I will take <clears> that <throat> away. I've, I've got a one-line supplementary, uh, Chair. Uh, yes, uh, you may go. Uh, 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 and it's a very simple one. I think it's the mixed message things that we've been alluding to. Because I, I recall uh, Councillor Paul saying at one stage, if we didn't take these charges, we'd have to close a library. Now that's a mixed message, and I think people are alluding to that, and I know Maz just alluded to that as well. That's mixed messaging. Why are you collecting the money? Good. Thank you. And I've seen um, Councillor Masters on this I, one. I just wanted to pick up, I mean, you, you've brought into play the, the fact that uh, the money is ring-fenced for, not, not just for the, the kind of potholes and road maintenance that I think most people would think should be fairly associated with uh, parking permits, but equally infrastructure changes that are now improving the lot of all residents, whether they have a car or not. And, and you know, there's been the stat that's been banded around about 52% of our residents actually not having a car. Well, bearing in mind the fact that they're actually going to be benefiting from a proportion of the spending isn't it time to look at having a section of uh, our council tax at, on a broader level and spreading those costs more widely so that the impact isn't coming down in terms of parking permits? I mean, I'm just interested in knowing what proportion of the revenue coming in going forward will be used for this kind of greening infrastructure that will benefit all our residents and which proportion will be used 
just for uh, our motorists uh, who are the ones who need the parking permits. I think there's two. I mean, I think there's there's two parts to that. I mean, firstly, it is a matter for us to decide on how we want to invest that. And I think you're right. There is an important discussion to be had about where we invest it. I mean, I think it is wrong to say that when you're talking about roads and potholes that just affects uh, drivers because if you're on a bus it makes a difference to you on how you travel if you're a cyclist a pothole can be quite dangerous motorcyclists have lobbied about the same thing so I think everybody does benefit from that I mean I describe it as transport because that's the legality around it in terms of how we, we invest it um, the thing I would add into that and I think it's quite important is we've started to see so we've always had money from TfL that got taken away some of it is coming back there have been other pots of money coming forward through Transport for London and through the Department of Transport and I'm always going to try and apply for as much money as I can from that and so Firstly, I'm not going to spend our own money on things where I can get it funded by regional or central government, which then frees up our money to do more investment. But I, again, I think it comes back around to Aisha Chowdhury's uh, comment in the beginning about talking to ward councillors and talking to local communities about where they want their investment. So when we were talking before the pandemic about what we could do around keep moving around shaping that, it was not just about road maintenance, it was about the general street safe and environment and improving it. And I think we can invest in that. So that I think that's a conversation I would be very interested in having with ward councillors and with residence groups about what the priorities are for their area so that it's being invested in something that everyone gets a benefit from. Yeah, thank you. Now I am about to bring this session to a close. Um, Councillor Darwood was having um, difficulties with our internet. I would give her another chance, but just in case um, our internet is still giving up problems. I think the gist of our question was about residents having to go out and purchase electric vehicle in when there is a recession going on just about now. I think that was the gist about our question. And um, Councillor Darwood, if you're there, can you hear us and do you want to try again? Um, so at, I think yeah. she's written her question Hi, in the yeah. But I kind of see Hi. it. I was looking for Hi, it. Um, um, can, I haven't seen it. Can you try again, please? Yeah. The, from what I've seen, it says the committee has been told that the purpose of this charge is to encourage a switch to electric vehicles. How can we expect our residents to spend um, on... My oh. question was... Okay. Okay. We've got Marion back. Yeah, my so. question was, how can we expect... How new electric cars Mars, in we the do middle a of better a job because crisis. you're still breaking up Mars, can you um, continue sorry mariam yeah sure um the question is how can we expect our residents to spend on new electric cars in the middle of a financial crisis that's okay. what i've written uh, that's what i've that's what i've read i mean unless i've got it wrong yeah, sorry, I was, I was, I was losing Mariam. I can see her, but hopefully she can hear me. Okay, I don't know if she can. She looks like she may, may have frozen. So I'm, I'll happily give her a written answer if she doesn't get to hear this. I think it's not just about electric vehicles. I mean, part of the reason we have a graduated tiers is you can, um, you know, lower tier by as you newer vehicles and cleaner vehicles and it's not just about electric ultimately there is a bigger debate going on around electric vehicles as the government has announced that from 2030 we won't be producing a diesel and petrol so there's a longer term discussion i was involved in discussion earlier today with councils in other parts of the country including interest and conversation with councils from uh, liverpool who are facing the same dilemma because we're going to need support from central and regional government about the necessary infrastructure and there's going to have to be support for uh, for people who want to to, to change things over. So yes, we would like to encourage people to move to electric vehicles. There is clearly a demand already which we're trying to meet. But it's not just about moving to electric vehicles. It's about moving to it's about moving to cleaner vehicles as well. So it, there's a there's a there's a balance of stuff in there. But ultimately, that's the way the direction of travel is. And we know that um, there's going to be a move in terms of mini cabs and private private hire towards electric too, which will, will have a benefit. But clearly. In poorer boroughs, and at the moment, electric remains more expensive than petrol vehicles. That's 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 going to be difficult for people. Sh it'll be interesting to see when the tipping point is when electric becomes cheaper um, than than petrol. But clearly, people relying on second-hand vehicles are not going to get to that point for some time. But the tiered system should allow people, as 
as their vehicles become newer and therefore cleaner to move down the tiers as well. Thank you. Um, I look forward to seeing your um, budget allocation for charging infrastructure in the borough where we come to budget working party. Um, right. I, um, That's another long discussion, Count Chair. <laughs> okay, right. I am only going to bring in two more people in this. I'm mean, no more than um, three, four minutes in total. Maz, is it going to be a quick one? It, it, it's very quick. I mean, look, I've, I've been advised that this decision cannot be called in because it's been excluded um, um, uh, you know, through a council process. And I know earlier there was a motion, a very good motion, which uh, happened to be withdrawn from council. I mean, my question to Councillor Asser is, would you not agree to a pause in this policy so that this committee, ONS scrutiny, this body which actually looks at council decisions, and particularly this decision which has caused so much angst, for us to have all the information and look in the round and, and kind of help the administration actually come up with a policy that's better communicated and better implemented and has the impacts that we want as a, as, as a council in terms of air quality. Well, what this has... I would just I would just say that this has been discussed. No, this is not the first time I've discussed this either a budget working party or scrutiny. Um, information whether the bit that was excluded from calling, as I understand, as part of the process, and I'm not an expert on the process related to the 20% discount, which is obviously what we brought forward in terms of making life easier in, uh, as the policy rolling forward. So I would not want us to delay on the 20% discount because I think it's important people get that up front rather than um, getting as a rebate. It's, thank you. Um, Susan, um, 30 seconds. Chair, yeah, I've had my hand up. Um, Sorry, John, I didn't see you. Uh, I okay. would bring Susan I've and had then my you. Hand up really, 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 yeah. really, really, really quickly. Um, first thing I'm hearing from residents that they definitely haven't been communicated with. It seems that people who've got permits to uh, renew imminently are hearing, but maybe not the ones who haven't got permits imminently. Um, in terms of the parking pause, it already has been delayed a bit, and I hear you've got government money to sort of support you in doing that. Would there be a possibility of getting that back? So I wasn't aware of that till I went to Budget Working Party last night and found that out. And finally, uh, one of the things that might reassure residents would be if you could sort of, at the end of the year, actually sort of publish some detail of the impact that all these measures have had. Um, and you know where where all the money has been spent on a kind of sort of local level in you know certainly when you're sort of talking about roads that that might help james yeah i mean i absolutely agree with that i think in terms of making sure we people are aware of where this money being spent is it is entirely fair and i think it comes back around to the earlier discussion about uh keep new and moving about people being able to see where investment is going in and where where the targeting is in terms of repairs and maintenance more than happy to do that and i'm sure this 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 body will want to see that and scrutinize that too yep thank you john um yeah, there's been, there have been calls, um, uh, James, about putting back the, this, the implementation of the charges uh, for, for a year. And now um, you've obviously uh, considered this and, and rejected it. Now, one reason for is obvious, that is for the loss of income. But are there any other reasons why you've decided not to, um, to reject the idea of uh, bringing this back in a year's time? So I think, I mean, I... There is no doubt that the loss of income is important. You know, it's as part of the budget. If you remove a significant amount of millions of pounds from the budget, that will clearly have an impact on frontline services of the council. There's no getting away from that. And essentially that's a political choice for councillors and you will have to make cuts in other areas. And that's perhaps where Councillor Clark's point about mixed messages come in, but there, there, is, there is no getting around the, the difficulties of the finances of that. I still come back to the point around the reason we're doing this around our air quality, around our environment, around improving health. I think it is difficult to keep delaying a decision that is quite important. I suspect if you delay a year, you will delay it longer than that because I think we will have a one year campaign which will dominate all our lives on this. And I suspect councils will be very nervous about introducing a similar scheme in early 2022 and push it back further. 
there then comes a point at which point do we even take the necessary measures that we then need to take. We have been told the impact on our residents, we have been told the impact in terms of pollution in our borough, there are measures we have to take on that. Lots of boroughs have been taken <coughs> different, and none of it has been easy and a lot of people in a very difficult period over, over the past few months and the past couple of years. And I've spoken to count, my counterparts and other boroughs who've introduced similar schemes who have been through a very, even tougher time than, 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 than people might have seen just through emails, um, including ended up having to get police support. So <coughs> I think it is difficult, but um, I still think that we're doing is the right scheme for the borough. Yeah. Okay, just a quick supplementary, sorry, no, very quick. No, no, no just, sorry, just, sorry, Ken, sorry, oh, sorry. Right, yeah, because thank you. I've seen a lot of people before you. Um, John, are you finished? Is there any supplementary, John? No, that is that is an answer. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm satisfied with the answer. I have seen three people, and I cannot bring all three of you in because of the time factor. I would bring the fourth person I've seen in, and that would be it. Councillor Lee Parkwood. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, my question centres around the value of each permit. Now, I think it's one thing to charge people for something. It's another to deliver value. Um, I know you've got a scheme whereby I think people have a free two hours per month only on the first permit in the household, however. And I would like to urge you to extend that to all permits in the household. And the reason why I say that is that those who have multiple cars are literally going to be paying through the nose for this. So they should benefit from doing so and that will in turn also help to drive the community wealth building agenda which I know this administration is so fond of by allowing our residents to go and spend money locally this could have a double whammy effect and I just <clears> wondered <throat> if this is something that you'd be prepared to look at Councillor Atta because to me it seems like a no-brainer we help to build our local economy but we also give our residents something for the money that they're going to be paying for these permits irrespective if it's the first second third fourth car in the household thank you chair yeah. Um, James, what I am um, as a compromise, if I take the other two members and James, you answer all of the question in one mm -hmm. go, that might be um, a way of getting the other members in. Councillor, it has to be brief. Excellent. Councillor Clark. Lovely. I'll be very brief. Uh, James, I, I, I know you're a Democrat and you have a history of that. But quite honestly, in your own conscience, do you think it's right that we're ignoring residents' views? There's been two consultations. We're all indicted with calls from residents about this, about this matter. You can hear uh, how we've all been talking tonight. Yet basically, we don't have any power. None of us have any power to change anything. And I think this is, you know, you, you can't possibly, as I know you, sit comfortably with us being ignored the residents being ignored about the plea that we've been buying, trying to make tonight on behalf of our residents. Thank you. And Councillor Chaudhry, are you ready? Yeah, thank you very much, Chair. Very, very quickly, according to what Councillor Assa said, it is not just about air quality, it is about uh, generating income. And I have no issue with that. But the issue is that if we are talking about money, why January and not April? The financial year begins in April, if, I, if my understanding is correct. Thank you. Yeah, right. James, can you answer all three of those and then we conclude the session? Thank yeah, you. So in terms of the last question on finances, it was, as I said, it was passed by um, uh, in, in the three year budget, which starts in this year. So the finances are scheduled in for this year. If we don't do it in this year, then there is a gap in the budget, which we would have to find and fill. There, there, is, there is no way around that. So you move it into next year, then there is a three and a half million pound gap in our budget for this year, which would have to be found elsewhere. Um, and given the financial situation, that was extremely difficult to do. So that, that's why it's because it's budgeted for this year. Um, Councillor Lee Parkway raised the point about um, the value, and I think it's important. I think it's an important question about value. And one of the things we're introducing as part of the digital permit, which has obviously not been touched on too much this evening, is in allowing people free parking booked in blocks. And I think that's the point you, you were asking about, wasn't, wasn't it, Daniel? Um, all right, well, I've misunderstood your question. Yeah, can I just clarify quickly, if you'll allow? Yes. All it was, what I was saying is that the 
free parking is for the first permit in each household. That's who will benefit from that. I was asking if you would look at extending it to every permit in the household to allow people to get real value for money for the money that they're going to be paying for these permits and not just the first permit in the household. Thank you. I'm happy to take away suggestions and look at what options we might have. Um, just in terms of Councillor Clark's question, um, yes, I am a Democrat. Um, in terms of councils being ignored, as I said, this this was discussed as part of the budget process, and it was passed. Uh, emission an emissions based scheme was passed by council in in the budget process at the beginning of the year. And originally, the it was one of the suggestions that came out of a scrutiny report from the Environment Scrutiny Commission. As I as I've as I as I've said, that I don't take yeah. any I don't take any decisions lightly. I don't sit and you know not consider what is you know what people are saying, and I think. Of it, carefully but I also said I think sometimes the right decision isn't always the easiest decision um I still think it, you know and we have attempted to try and mitigate that as part of the, the with the discount scheme I would say to you councillors there has never been there has never been a parking scheme introduced to any council that has been easy to do or has been popular and I've spoken to my counterparts across London it is the trickiest area to deliver it in um and I, I think characterising me as someone who who is 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 delivering in a way that, that has ignored everyone, I think is unfair. That that decision was made before the pandemic, James. Thank you. Um, thank you, James and officers for attending. Can I um, say that um, the consensus of this meeting um, is that the scheme is unpopular um, with members as a whole, and the scheme is um, grossly unpopular with our residents. And that is what has um, um, been coming through from the questions that has been. We have not had an opportunity to do pre-decision um, scrutiny on this. And because of the exemption, we have not had an opportunity to call it in. Um, however, as a result of this meeting, scrutiny um, is allowed to put recommendations to the executive to consider on any matters that we have had presented before us. So as a result of um, this meeting, uh, we will be um, generating some recommendations um, to be put to yourself as the executive member um, for this, um, James, and that will be making its way um, to you in the very near future, because we can do um, recommendations at any time, pre or post. And if the scheme has not been implemented as yet, it's about to be implemented in January. So um, um, you um, should be expecting some recommendations coming your way. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Councillor John, for giving up your evening and attending. And I look forward to seeing your um, communication strategy working with the residents. Um, thank you, GME, for attending um, our meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, committee members. Can I? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Can I um, just say that normally at a meeting like this, we do not always um, generate and recommendations not often, but because of the nature of this and because um, many residents feel um, aggrieved by this, we would be need to be looking at some recommendations to put forward to the executive for consideration. Obviously that would be public. It would then be for the executive to do a formal um, response to our recommendations. Um, okay, I've seen Susan. Are we now uh, talking privately offline or are we still No, on we now? still have a lot of items on the agenda to, um, so I, any private remarks um, you can it's, um, it's just a, it's, I mean, until it, I indicate. It, it probably is a, bit a private conversation, but it might be worth me circulating uh, the agreements that I had from James off the back of okay. me. Okay, not at my this motion. stage. I will take that later. I'll, I'll sort of share it with members afterwards. 
Okay. Yeah, um, sir, I just wanted to agree with what you have said. In addition to that, I don't think my question was answered, especially about the urgency. Uh, the reason, I mean, we, we could not... Say, Chair, there is an officer still linked to the meeting. Um, so, can we... Um, in the um, waiting room until he leaves. My, my apologies, Chair. I'm, I'm sorry. I thought this was still a public meeting, so I was just. I, 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 no, my yes, apologies. Yes, yes. If, it's, if it's not public anymore, I do apologise. No, it is. It is still a public meeting, and you're free to stay. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah. It's still yeah, sure, but nothing confidential. I don't have anything confidential. Mm -hmm. uh, just wanted to echo what you have said, and I think it's important that um, the, the, the recommendation goes out. The reason uh, is that I still fail to understand why there was an urgency in terms of cabinet making that decision, and we did not have enough time to go through it uh, properly. Now, um, as I said, like financial year, I, my knowledge is that financial year begins in April, and therefore, even if there was a need for the first card to be charge um, um, and not we are not able to give them 100% discount instead of 20% discount. We could still um, start that from April rather than January. And therefore, I fail to understand about the urgency. Um, um, so we should be able to rec uh, recommend for something else that we'd make decision yeah. in the future or should yeah. I am. Um, I have got, I have captured the members' sentiments and feelings on this matter. And so therefore I will be consulted with the members um, in terms of recommendations um, going forward. Um, I've seen Daniel and Maz, and bear in mind that we have other... Um, I, Check, could I, could I just... Yeah, uh, can, I, can I move um, standing order to 15 minutes so that um, we can get through the business of this evening? Agreed. 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 Okay, fine. Yes, Daniel. Uh, just very quickly, I think there's a number of things that we could learn from ben this. John. Sorry, Chair. Uh, there's a number yeah. of things we could learn from this policy. And I think it would be helpful if we, as overview and scrutiny, actually looked at it in a timeline fashion, right from the start to the end to where we are today, and just to go through where maybe things could have gone better. Because even Councillor Asser, of his own admission, has said that maybe comms was a bit weak, there were certain things that could have been better. And I think as scrutiny, yes, it's nice to look to the future, but sometimes we need to make sure that the uh, mistakes of the past are not repeated again and also I think in terms of the consultation etc there's a number of different areas where I feel that there's weaknesses there that we should probably have a look at and then we can formulate a special report on this policy alone I think there's enough there to warrant that chair um, if the rest of the committee would agree with me thank you chair uh, point taken and I hope the committee will agree with that because that is the way I intend to go in terms of before we can come up with some recommendation we need to look at it comprehensively and then make some recommendations. And if possible, before we make the recommendations, if the committee feels that we need to call James again to clarify a few matters, then we can do that and make the recommendations. Maz. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, one of the most disturbing aspects of uh, James's testimony is he, he started off talking about climate emergency and uh, air quality. And at the end, he admitted that were this policy not to come into force, um, uh, then there'll be a big hole in the finances. And I find that very, very disturbing. The reason I find that disturbing can, is, again... Can I, can I stop you? Can I stop you, Mike? Yeah. Can we do the, the, the deliberation of this later when the meeting go into closed session? Sure. OK. Then, then oh. what I will say, what I will say yes. is that I think what we've had today is a number of recommendations we can include in our report. I think it's sad that we couldn't call this policy in because it's something I think that's prime for, for a call in. But for some reason, that's not going to happen today. And I'm pretty sure residents that are watching will be very, very concerned as to why that's happened. And maybe there's an explanation that the chair can prefer. Number two, there is still scope for this scrutiny committee to really get its teeth into this by calling for a pause in the policy, the implementation of this policy, calling for a pause, despite it coming in January. I think the 20% discount needs to be looked at. It should be a bigger discount. We all agree on that. And I think Councillor Chowdhury alluded to the fact that it could be a 100% discount in light of COVID because this decision was taken in uh, without COVID being on the horizon in any way, shape or form. So those are things I hope Roger uh, Raymond, the very uh, skillful officer who's on this 
uh, can capture some of these things. It's very, very important. Yep. Thank you. Um, Ken and then Susan. Yeah, no, I, I agree very and much John. with that. Yeah, th thank you, Chair. Uh, I agree very much with what, what Councillor uh, Patel was just alluding to. Um, I, I, I think we do need to make a stand here. Uh, obviously, uh, the, the way the thing was exempted uh, was a little bit underhanded, if you ask me. Uh, by Tony can, we keep the can we keep the can we keep certain remarks to the deliberation rather okay, than well, I can't, I can't let myself but tell the truth, you see. Uh, but 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 basically, I, I think we should now pause ourselves and consider what our next actions are, uh, and, and and then we can in the closed session we can formulate an opinion and a view that we can make a recommendation on. Whether they ever take any notice of this is another question, but I think we should because scrutiny is the key to all we do in a council. We're the people that scrutinise the executive. And in this case, we're finding it very difficult to be able to do that. Susan and then John. Um, I completely agree with the sentiments expressed. Um, I, as you know, I really wanted this uh, policy paused, but was concerned about the impact that might have and how it might be sort of politically used in terms of cuts to other services that had sort of funding sort of assured. Uh, that's, that is a matter for deliberation. Yeah, so outside, but, but I mean, okay. all I was going to say in terms yeah. of... Um, calling i mean this is a policy that was passed before the pandemic that's the issue here that at the time it was passed i don't think any of us saw the impact that this was going to have and the pandemic has changed absolutely everything and officers should have seen this coming down the line the government funded them to pause it for a certain length of time and the fact it was then coming through in january that the circumstances of our residents hadn't changed should again have been foreseen and it should have been a conversation by people who are paid a lot more money than me uh long before we got to this stage where it became clear what the economic impact had been on our residents coming together with this scheme sort of starting. Um, so I'm, I'm very happy to support any move and certainly going into the new budget. Okay. Thank you. John. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I, I, I do think there has been um, consensus on some of the concerns around this policy. Though I don't think there's a consensus on necessarily on what our recommendations would be. So all I'm saying is we should very clearly have the recommendations um, set out before us and then each member can take a decision on how they feel about these recommendations. Right, that is how the scrutiny would work. We'd have to put the recommendations yes. in the league and then we agree what recommendations should go forward. Indeed, thank you. Yeah. Um, yes, Mariam. Maria might still be having problems. Okay, so colleagues, um, so that's it on um, on the emission-based parking um, sections for now, and we would comment on that later once we go into private deliberations regarding this and the formulation of the recommendations for your um, contribution. Item seven of the agenda. Um, the committee will note that scrutiny officers have compiled a short report reflecting the discussions and recommendations of the meetings held over the summer, and this can be found on page 15 of the agenda. I propose that this report is submitted to the executive for a response to the recommendations made. Is that agreed? Okay, thank you. Agreed, Chair. Thanks. Um, the item eight, item eight is an update from myself, Chair of Overview and Scrutiny um, Committee. Uh, by way of a short and brief update, I would say that chairs have um, met, continue to meet and to discuss both formally and informally on matters pertaining to the management of Overview and Scrutiny Commission. I have also met regularly with the chief executive officer and the mayor. I, in fact, I've met, um, this very week I've met with the mayor on Monday and the chief executive officer yesterday 
to discuss scrutiny related um, matters. On 3rd of December, I presented the newly formulated protocol to cabinet. That um, protocol will be making its way to our external um, partners, i.e. the police and, and else to comment on the sections relating to them. The executive is also considering the protocol and will be making their input into it within the next two weeks. Then it will be making its way to the non-executive members for their input. So by the end of the consultation of the protocol, it would be scrutiny as um, a body. It would be the executive, that is the political executive and the corporate executive, else and the police and non-executive members would all have their say into what the protocol look like going forward. And I hope then we can have a document that we will live by and it will be for the benefit of scrutiny within the London Borough of New York. Budget Working Party has um, started. We met last night um, and we had a discussion with the mayor and the cabinet member for finance and resource. Next week, we will be meeting with our housing colleagues and the week after, we'll be meeting with um, education, the cabinet members for education. And after the Christmas, we continue to and scrutinize the budget of other um, directorates within the council. What I am intended to do in the budget working party has got um, members that is agreed by overview scrutiny committee. I know other members are keen to play a part in budget working party and I would reach out to those members to invite them to make contribution um, to the tender meetings and make contribution to budget working party um, if they so um, wish. So um, I will do that within the next few um, days. I said my report will be briefed, so I would not um, um, take your time, seeing that we are in extended time. Is. Sorry, Chair. Chair, is there, could you report? Uh, yeah. Chair? Could yes. you report back on your meetings with the chief executive and with the mayor? Okay. The, Contents and what was discussed? Yes, I can. The meeting with the um, chief executive was regarding um, the protocol. It was mainly regarding um, the protocol and how this is, um, will be um, taken forward. And our meetings arrangements, because the chief executive has made um, representation on behalf of our executive colleagues in terms of the number of meetings that they have, at, they have to attend. And one of our um, concerns is that sometimes a deputy um, director or assistant director might be better able to attend and give the answers rather than the corporate director themselves. And I do agree with that because sometimes they depends on who the responsibilities of the various directors. A assistant director might be the person that we more want to talk to. And what happens, as you know, sometimes the director will start and then pass it over to the assistant director. And so in order to use people's time better, it's, um, it's better that we do it that way than bringing in odd officer core. My discussion with the mayor, again, it was about budget working party, the formulation of budget working party. It was about the protocol that we have mm -hmm. that is before or for consideration. So those were um, the two, again, main um, items of discussion. Do, do you have anything to report about the mayor's behavior last night? Um, no, I don't have anything. Is there anything that you want to report, Councillor? I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't there. I wasn't there. Okay. I'm just asking you. you know. No. No, I don't have anything to report. Okay. Thank you. Right. Okay. So, colleagues, is there anything that you would want to... That's colleagues' chairs. Is there anything that you would want to highlight? Any chair? Do you, would you like us to say something about what we've been doing? 
if you want to highlight anything that you've been doing. Well, it's quite quick with me because we had a very long gap with the um, Regeneration Housing and Environment Scrutiny uh, Commission. We didn't meet till the 28th of October when we looked at uh, accommodation and support for rough sleepers, um, uh, particularly uh, during COVID. And again, how the corporate co uh, contact centre functioned during the pandemic and how it was able to serve people and uh, the, the, the degree of um, problems it uh, may have met and we we did look at the a policy review of the allocations the new allocations um policy uh for homes and the housing delivery strategy and we looked at both of them together we had a discussion and we also fed into the consultation meeting next on the 17th of december when we're particularly <coughs> interrogating the new as you know there's been a new lead for housing services we're going to interrogate him on his um, on, on his priorities, and particularly on the homeless reduction strategy. Yeah. I'm Carpen, you are um, you will be considering the Carpenters Estate um, project um, in yeah. the future. Um, I can say we put that back. We were thinking of it this month, but because the mayor's not available, will be that will be the sub one of the subjects of the following scrutiny early next year. Okay, thank you very much, um, Daniel. Thank you. Mm, sorry, one second. Sorry, Chair. I felt like I had a frog in my throat. Um, I have the privilege of chairing two different committees, the COVID-19 Task and Finish, as well as the Crime and Antisocial Behaviour Committee. Um, we are going to be meeting next for the COVID-19 Task and Finish on the 17th of December, where we'll be looking at a broad overview of the Council's response thus far and how the Council seeks to address winter pressures that come from the COVID pandemic. Uh, we will be meeting for Crime and ASB in the new year, in January at some point, because we did have a meeting in November. Our substantive item that we were looking at this year was gangs and girls, um, also serious youth violence, and there are a number of different issues. We also have our statutory um, parts of the council that we need to look at, community safety partnership, etc., which we've done, Chair. So I don't want to bore people too much, but just to say that um, throughout the pandemic, COVID-19 task and finish was going on we were looking at things in real time in terms of the council's response to the pandemic how the council was helping residents and how the council itself was dealing with the pandemic in terms of resources in terms of staffing etc so it's been a very busy time for us and for myself um, and hopefully long may it continue thank you chair thank you contest charger would you like to say something uh, yeah just very briefly again in um i'm chairing health and adult social care and we during this pandemic i would say it's quite difficult at the moment but we are quite busy um mental health is something that we have been uh, looking into previously uh, young people's health and vaccine um and um, care home and social care uh, were our um, main topics um uh, until recently, I mean, next meeting is tomorrow. Um, uh, I welcome all my colleagues if any of you are interested in attending. Um, and I think I will leave it to there, but I had to ask a, a question about overview scrutiny, membership and atten attendance. I'm not sure if we have, um, I mean, should I be asking that at the, any other business or shall I ask now? I mean, it's um, it should be at any other business. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so I would, I would indulge you to ask it now, seeing that you have the floor. Sorry, Chad, line was cut off for a second. It should be at any other business, but because we are pressed for time, I would oh, now. Okay, thank you. So very quickly, again, I can see especially a specific member not attending overview and scrutiny meeting and not getting any apologies either. So I'm not really sure um, uh, if, if if the member is not a member any longer, then maybe replacement need to be um, considered. Um, so overview and scrutiny is an important committee and I would like to say that everyone is participating. Thank you. N noted, I have had recommend, um, representation myself and it's something that I'm open to deal with you as a fellow chair and the other two chairs, thank you. I'm we need to refer these matters to the whip, I think, don't we, Chair? Okay, um, there is something that I would deal with with the chairs and the whip. Okay. Um, thank you. As Chair of um, Children and Young People, we will be meeting tomorrow, and one of the substantive items on our agenda would be looking at the Ofsted. As you know, um, Ofsted is working with the London Borough of 
children's services to improve it from its present um, state, we, um, we, had, we were judged to be inadequate. So um, a lot of work has been going on. That report will be considered um, tomorrow and alternative provisions also will be considered. So those are the two main items that we will be considering um, in our meeting tomorrow. So there's two, there's two excuse me, meetings tomorrow, health and children and young people. Um, thank you. So I would now um, move on to item 10, because we just finished item nine. And item 10 is appointments. What I have asked officers to do is to um, put appointment or make appointment a standing agenda item. So I wish to make the following announcement. The committee to note the foreign appointment to the budget working party, Councillor Susan Master and Councillor Winston Vaughan. And two, the committee to note the foreign member stepping down from crime and at the Social Behavior Scrutiny Commission. I'm Councillor Jen Kitchen and Councillor Alan Griffith. Is that noted? Okay, thank you. As I said, I will be reaching out to some members of um, the non-executive members regarding Budget Working Party. Councillor Lee Parker. Um, Chair, there was a member that was um, meant to be joining crime. Did you receive that? No, it's not here, but we can take it from you now. Um, who is the member? It was Councillor John Gray to be joining the Crime and Antisocial Behaviour. Yeah. Um, can I um, take some advice from officers? Um, you did mention it to myself, um, Councillor. Um, and this is the body that makes the appointment. Can I ask officers for advice? Do we need to publish? the name in advance or can we do it at this meeting now? I'm waiting for officers. Yeah. Chair, I think you'd have to, you just announce it at the next ONS meeting. So you can make it public tonight and then announce it at the next, sorry, next council meeting. Yeah, so, so yeah, yeah, Chair, yeah. this was this was raised, and obviously there have been discussions about this. Okay, right. I'm, I'm so just I, mindful I, we are still on YouTube, but there have been discussions about. Okay, this, so, so what I would do, what I would do, um, Councillor Lee Park, um, you do, um, you have indicated that Councillor Gray would be a member of your committee. I would um suggest that you do invite Councillor Gray to attend your committee, although he will not have voting rights but he can ask speaking right. And the next overview meeting, we would formally appoint him to the committee. Um, if I may, Chair, that's contrary to what the officer just said. The officer just said that we, he, we could be appointed tonight and then at the next council meeting, it will be ratified. That's what- um, um, Okay. I, hear what, I think he was, because that's the I overview. Hear, yeah. I, hear, I hear, as you know, um, the long custom and practice um, councils that we can invite any member to any committee we can co-opt and if, and he can partake in any meeting once you as chair and give him speaking rights. He won't have voting rights and we can then formally um, appoint him to the committee at our next meeting. Chair, I do apologize and I really don't want to seem pedantic on this, but if you don't mind me asking, why the almost um, obstruction to us just doing this now? We're here, we're at the meeting, we can do this now. All you have to do is utter a word and it's done. I don't understand. I mean, I can invite anyone to a meeting. I totally understand what you're saying, Chair. But it does seem to me that there is something else to this because with all due respect, it's a very the, simple matter. No, uh, you, what I'm, the, the only thing that I'm asking is whether we have to publish it in advance on the agenda. And that's why I sought officer advice. And Roger said, no, he said, it's fine. Yeah, sorry, Chair, I might, yes, I want to ask what did, a point the council, I made a mistake. Sorry, yes. commissions so said, are appointed by ONS. So they said we can do it now. So, yeah. okay, so if we don't have to publish your name in advance and we can do it now, then um, um, does the committee agree to appoint, um, note, sorry, note the appointment? Yeah, noted. Agreed. Okay, thank you. So now, um, can the minute reflect that Councillor Gray is now a member on the Crime and Anti Social Commission? Thank you, Chair. Okay. 
Thanks. Okay. Work program. Is there any um, ma um, uh, meter um, raising regarding the work program? Any contribution from members? Okay. Item 12, the forward plan for key decisions. I have asked in the past that the forward plan um, be the items be listed and put on our agenda. Um, can we do that for our next meeting, please? Can we minutes that and get it done on the next meeting? Is there any member who want to make a contribution? No? Thank you. Item 13, the date of our next meeting. Officers, I have agreed the date for our meeting in February, which will be the 3rd of February, yeah, and the January chair. meeting. Roger, <laughs> I'm looking to you regarding- Yes, the uh, sorry, yes, that's the, the next meeting's now going to be agreed. It's um, the 3rd of February. Okay. So I will- send the notification out to members so it's in their uh, diaries. Thank you. Can member, um, members note the meeting um, would be on the 3rd of February. During um, January, there's a lot of meetings to be had, um, especially budget working party. You have in about four or five meetings during the month of January. Okay. Um, I'm about to bring the meeting to a close. Does anyone um, wants to say anything at this time? Now is your time to say it quick and smart. If not, I would call the meeting to a close. Yeah, councillor. Just want to say thank you, Chair, for chairing a quite a difficult and demanding meeting. Um, also, I thought it was a very productive meeting.